This video is brought to you by me. See, I work really hard during the day job to afford these cool and interesting gadgets and the gears to making these videos. So I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe to my channel if you find my videos interesting or at least tolerable. Thanks. Hey guys, this is Sam. And today we'll check out a few M1 Mac compatible apps that will 10x your productivity. All right, that was obviously not the real Sam. This is the real Sam. That wasn't me speaking. That was actually some machine generated audio. And I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy for you to tell because there are still some weird spots here and there, like the M1, M1 Mac mini, instead of M1 Mac mini, like how a human would typically emphasize the M. That's just one of the few things that's weird about it. But uh, let's come back to this app. This is the first M1 compatible app we're going to talk about. It's called Descript. Now, this is actually one of the features that's powered by machine learning in Descript. And you would have probably guessed how this feature works. This is called Overdub. Basically, what happens is I can just type whatever I want. Say, hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Oh, I don't, actually don't know how the emoji or the ASCII emoji is gonna be handled, the smiley face is gonna be handled. But over on the bottom right-hand corner, you can see it says generating overdub. And now it's finished generating. Let's give it a listen. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really, really robotic. And it's partially my fault because Descript actually requires recordings of my voice in order to generate my voice or some audio that sounds like my voice. And it requires quite a bit of training data to train their machine learning model in order to generate a more accurate and natural sounding voice, human voice. And to do that, during the setup for Overdub, I have to come over to this site where it hosts a script for Descript, Descript script. And you can see over here on the right hand side, there's different milestones or phases where I have to read the entire thing and send Descript the recording of me reading the script. Just take a look. This looks like something David Attenborough would be reading, like Planet Earth or something. But from all these words and from analyzing the characteristics of my voice, Descript is able to train a machine learning model to, to do this which allows me to type whatever text I want and have it generate something that sounds like my voice. And this is particularly useful if I have a recording and there's one or few words that are missing and I can't, for some reason, can't go back to re-record the words. I can just correct the words in place and Discord will generate somewhat natural sounding replacement word in there. Let me demonstrate. So now I'm not going to type in any words. I'm going to go over here to record some audio. Let me think of a scenario, maybe for podcasting, right? Say you just for some reason forgot the name of your guest. Hey everyone, welcome to my podcast. And in this episode, we are honored to have an awesome guest to our show, James Rogan. Oops. I got our guest's name wrong. It's Joe Rogan, not James Rogan. This is actually the perfect segue, an invisible segue to showcase Descript's main feature, the main selling point of Descript. Uh, as you can see, as I was recording, as I was speaking, Descript transcribes the words live almost in real time, which is amazing in its own right. And not only that, it actually, when I click on the words, you can see it jumps the playhead at the bottom to the corresponding time in the audio. So it actually has a link between text and the actual words that's spoken in the audio. So that's super amazing because it allows us to do things like this. If I don't want this word and in here, I just delete that. And I don't know if you noticed, but at the bottom, the audio, the piece of audio that is the word and is also deleted. This makes editing anything audio, anything spoken words, of course, super, super easy and it's a super time-saving feature. I love this feature and uh, let me not get sidetracked. I need to really get our guest's name right. So in here, when I double click on this word, you can see I can correct. This is when maybe the spelling is incorrect. When I do the correction, if I say for some reason his name is James, not James, when I hit correct, it's going to correct the text script. It's not going to touch the audio. So that's for 
misspelling, maybe the machine learning algorithm or the, the transcription algorithm is not getting it right. So that's something we could do. But over here, you can see there is an overdub button. When I click on that, it says, to use overdub, add a voice to the speaker level because it needs to know who is actually speaking this sentence. In this case, I only have my voice trained. So I'm going to assign a label and then come back here. I could click on overdub or I can press the keyboard shortcut D. Now we want to actually say Joe Rogan. And over here, you can see it's generating overdub for that section. Let me grab my headphone to see or to hear how well it did yes, to our show Joe Rogan that is actually surprisingly good because I've heard a lot of bad ones early on I was trying trying I was playing with the overdub feature quite a lot and this is one of the most natural one I, I have heard and so yeah that's something you could do if you just for some reason cannot go back and re-record the part that you made the mistake in and again a perfect segue back to our Descript's main feature which is audio editing through text. So in this case, I already deleted a word here. It's the and I thought that's a filler word we didn't really need to be in the final recording. So I removed that and it removed that part of the audio as well. That's very awesome. So the other thing is I think there is too much of a pause. Yeah, there's too much of a pause between guest to our show and the actual name of the guest. So I could just come down here and basically use this as a normal audio editor. So I selected that part and deleted it. Now, if I listen to it again, I might as well just put the headphone on. All right. Yes, to our show, Rogan. Rogan? Did I delete too much? There, that's the other thing. We could see it actually has non-destructive editing. First of all, I can undo. Second, even if I deleted it, I could recover it very easily by just dragging some parts of that. Oops. I'm going to need to, yeah, first convert that to audio. And then I'm going to drag this thing over here to shorten that gap. And now when I hit play, awesome guest to our show, Joe Rogan. that's actually not bad. I also don't want the last trailing bit. I just delete that. So I'm hoping that you are able to see the power in Descript and what it allows you to do. But if you think the power of Descript ends there, you'd be wrong. Let me show you something even crazier. Descript has taken the audio non-destructive editing through text feature. I don't really remember what it's called, but they took that feature to a whole new level. If I try to record something else, all right, now I'm going completely off script. I'm just recording something random and I'm going to put in a lot of filler words and I'm just going to ramble and have something that I probably don't want in the final recording. But yeah, and I'm going to pause for uncomfortably amount of time uncomfortably uncomfortable i am really going off script here i'm hoping you understand that and uh, i'll stop it right there all right so again everything is transcribed live as i'm speaking and of course i don't want this part so you already know that i can just highlight the words and delete that and it deletes that part of the audio as well and i want to show you yet another amazing feature if you go over here and click on remove filler words it opens up this dialogue on the side for if you typically just want to search for a word, you can search for like it's typical find and replace feature. But in this case, it's using somewhat of a machine learning approach to finding specific kind of words. In this case, filler words like um, uh, and it's found a lot and it highlights all of them and I can click on them. I'm going to put yeah, when I click on it, it plays that segment, that clip of the audio. And if I move myself somewhere else. So at the bottom left, you can see I have two actions I can take towards addressing this filler word. I can either delete it or ignore it. And then I, when I hit apply, it's going to apply it. Or if this is a super long script, I could just say apply to all. Four filler words deleted just with two clicks in total. Imagine how much time this is going to save you if you had an hour long recording or you have multiple speakers because Descript can detect filler words in multiple speakers as well. And it doesn't just end there. You probably saw in the same dialogue, there is this other one that says shorten word gaps. So over here, this is a configurable amount. I can look for 
word gaps that are longer than however many seconds in this case i want everything over 0.5 seconds to be shortened to 0.2 seconds and once again i could click on individual items and address them individually just in case i want to keep some of the gaps but in this case i'm just gonna hit apply to all now let's give it a quick listen and you already listened to this i'm gonna put it on 1.5 and mind you, these little features, I really command Descript for including these, like changing the playback speed, especially when you're editing, you want to save time not having to listen to your own recording at normal speed. So let's give it a quick listen. Now I'm going completely off script. I'm just recording something random and I'm going to put in a lot of filler words and I'm just going to ramble and have something that I probably don't want in the final recording. But yeah, and I'm going to pause for uncomfortably amount of time. I am really going off script here. I'm hoping you understand that. I was honestly going off script there and I was making a lot of mistakes. And again, we could easily just correct those mistakes or delete the parts. There's a lot of ants that I don't want. I just delete them. But I'm hoping you can hear that in the edited final version of the audio, it sounds a lot tighter. It sounds a lot cleaner without all the ums and all the random rambling. And it really sounds like I was making a lot fewer mistakes than I actually did. Honestly, my mind was blown to pieces when I first learned about these these group features. And it saved me a lot of time. Well, by the way, this this video is not sponsored by Descript, although I wouldn't mind if they paid me. Um, but uh, oh, also it's sponsored by myself if you missed the beginning of the video. But I honestly benefited a lot from using Descript on my own videos and audio editing. And it's honestly magical. Of course, there are occasionally some crashes here and there, but it doesn't actually lose my data because it uploads everything to the cloud, which you can access via their web portal or web, uh, web site, web app. And on the top right hand corner, you can see here that it's last synced four minutes ago and all changes are saved and synced automatically when connected to Wi-Fi. So this really gives you a peace of mind and it saves you a lot of time. What's there not to love? Click the link in the description. That's not an affiliate link. That's just a regular link because Descript doesn't even have a referral program right now. And for Android user, I'm personally an Android user and a Mac OS user. And on Android, unfortunately, Descript is not available. So I had been using this other app called otter.ai and I've installed the Mac app as well. It is very similar to Descript in that it does transcription live in real time as you're recording. Check this out. This is a recording using otter.ai. I haven't really used their editing feature, but I this is what I'm going to find out. It doesn't have all the cool features that Descript includes, like automatically detecting and removing all the filler words and shorten the word gaps. It has a pretty simple editing or I guess transcription correction tool where I could just, you know, maybe like this is a recordings or something. See, I could, I could just change the transcript to make sure everything is spelled correctly, but I cannot do the overdub thing with Descript. But one good thing about otter.ai is that it comes with a couple hours of free transcription every month, which is different than Descript, where you only have three hours to basically try it. And after three hours, you're gonna have to pay the monthly fee. But honestly, Descript has saved me enough time that the monthly fee I'm currently paying is pretty much a steal. All right, let's move on to our next M1 compatible app on our list. I don't know about you, but my computer desktop is pretty much as messy as my physical desktop. But ever since I started using an app called Spectacle, everything is super organized. My virtual workspace is a lot more organized than my physical workspace. And it does exactly what it says. It helps you move and resize windows with ease. And it's sort of a window management tool. Unfortunately, Spectacle is no longer being maintained and the maintainer is recommending another app, which is also open source and free called Rectangle. This does pretty much the same thing as Spectacle, except a few more features. Let me demonstrate. So over here, I sort of have a chaotic and uh, I, I don't know, work environment, workspace where I have a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document or pages document, some reference website and Wikipedia. Right there, what you just saw, I just use some keyboard shortcuts to organize the windows in a two by two grid. 
And it's great for research, it's great for referencing. And I use this all the time during coding sessions. And right here, you can see this is rectangle. It has all of these variations you could put your windows in. If I go over to configurations, you can see I have set up a lot of keyboard shortcuts for the most frequent locations I put my windows in. And I for all the other ones, just to not conflict with other apps, keyboard shortcuts, I just remove those keyboard shortcuts. So here are the only ones that I'm actually using and I only assign keyboard shortcuts to these. This is especially useful when you are already typing on the keyboard and your hands are already on the keyboard. You don't have to go over to reach the mouse. You could just, you know, a well-organized desktop is a few keyboard shortcuts away. But sometimes you just want to use a mouse. Rectangles got you covered there as well. You can just drag the window to the side. Now it's taken up half of the screen. You drag it to the other side. It's taking up the other half. If you drag it to the top, you drag it to the top, it's going to full size the window. So this is a lot more versatile than the built-in Mac side-by-side -side window thing where it requires you to have at least two windows and it basically just has two windows full screen side by side you can't really split any of the halves in halves like what we just did with rectangle so this is a really simple free and open source window management app for your m1 mac and it actually says right here it supports intel and apple silicon so when you switch from Intel to M1 or from M1 back to Intel, you don't have to lose your habitual keyboard shortcuts and the familiar, you know, window dragging and snapping feature like that. And that's pretty much it with Rectangle. It's super simple and useful. All right, that'll be it for today. I hope you found the apps I went over in this video helpful to you, uh, especially when you're transitioning to M1 Mac from Intel, because there are a few apps that are not compatible but in my experience, the compatibility game with M1 and Rosetta combined is strong here. There's only one, I think there's only exactly one app that wasn't compatible on my M1 Mac mini. And I don't re even remember what it was because I don't use it more than twice in a decade. So to me, I'm not affected. And I'll make sure I make another video next time I found more useful M1 Mac compatible apps that will boost 10x your productivity because these apps combined really did 10x my own productivity. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.